If you played the first weekend of Alpha 2 testing, well, you know that that launch didn't go without some hiccups. Throughout that weekend, Intrepid was plagued with server issues, stability issues, game crashes, and all sorts of wacky things that made this first weekend less than satisfying for a lot of players. Obviously, a lot of this was anticipated as this was the first weekend of a true Alpha test that is meant to have bugs and all this sort of thing that we as the testers are meant to help fix, but Intrepid is already rapidly making changes to the Alpha 2 build that we were playing to hopefully fix a lot of the issues that players were having that first week of testing, along with some different balance changes. To do this, Intrepid is doing it over on the PTR, and have been dropping patches and updates to this throughout this past week. Now, for those of you who don't know, the PTR is under a visual NDA, so I can't share footage of what's happening during these tests, but it is not under a verbal NDA, so we can talk about the patch notes and all those sorts of things that are going into these fixes. And honestly, there are quite a few changes that are pretty awesome and pretty surprising to see. Intrepid jumped right into these updates, starting on this past Monday, where they updated network improvements to reduce issues with players running in place at server boundaries, performance improvements to some areas of the map, and general network performance optimization. Throughout these structured tests, they brought players in and had them go to specific spots of the maps and do certain things to really help stress test these zones to make sure those fixes were implemented, and if not, give them the data to continue to work on patching these issues. A lot of this happened in the Winstead and Mirrorless zone, where you probably noticed some pretty rocky stability going through those areas in the last few weeks. On Tuesday, they once again brought these servers back up and added a whole bunch of changes such as commodity vendors in the Sandsquall Desert and Vandegar Tropics, so you can now take caravans from these areas back to the nodes. They added a 500 character limit to chat messages because people were really taking advantage of this, and I'm not sure why this didn't have a limit in place to begin with, but it's kind of funny to see. They also fixed issues that caused some characters to spawn with corruption, even if they died with zero corruption, fix issues that prevented some characters from having a choice of spawns, fix issues with the death location not displaying on the minimap, made changes so that death location is visible at all map zoom levels, made changes to icon scaling on the map when zooming, added options for inverted mouse controls, added options for screen percentage in a drop down for AMD users, improved performance in some map areas, added additional NPC populations to Samaya's Hope, which we'll get into that in a minute, adjusted the perimeter wall for free Samaya as hope fix issues where objective markers could be underneath other icons on the map, and made improvements to the smoothness of mount moving. Throughout this test, Intrepid also had players again run around and test certain issues, especially when mounted, and then they had people run around the areas of the Citadel of Steelbloom and Carfin to test out spawn rates for item drops, which we found out weren't actually dropping, so they're working on improving that as well. Going back through those I just read, a lot of these are issues that players brought up in this past week, and it's pretty cool to see them already acting on them, such as minimap issues, the commodities in the desert and tropics, inverted mouse controls, the added options for screen percentage with AMD. A lot of this stuff was really contributed to from player feedback, which lets you know that Intrepid is in fact listening, which I've said over and over again, they are doing a great job at communicating and a great job at responding to players' feedback. Wednesday, though, is where the real fun begins, because Wednesday, they added Samaya's Hope, and this is the secondary starting area, so if you go to the Divine Gateway Room and go left instead of right, you are going to go towards Samaya's Hope, and Samaya's Hope is supposed to be, when it's fully implemented, the staging area for the Veiloon humans that will eventually lead you into the Sand Squall Desert, taking a completely different path from those following the Kalar human storylines into the Riverlands. This was something that I was not expecting to see added yet, and it's kind of cool to see, although right now I went into that area and it's very bare bones, it looks like they still got a ways to go with adding NPCs and quest givers and all that there is crafting stations though and i imagine those will probably be added on thursday or friday's patch as they continue to do these updates because the whole point of them turning this on now is to spread out player movement and hopefully take away some of the strain on those lion hold servers and in order for this to work properly they're gonna need the samaya's hope starting area to have equivalent things as lion hold such as the mount quest crafting tables the general vendor and a few quest lines that will really make people want to go to this area instead of Lionhold. They also made improvements to prevent server crashes, added a radius that players must be in to gain Luke's drops because if you've noticed in the past, if you're in a party and on the other side of the map, if a green item drops, you could still claim that loot. You can still roll on that and claim the loot. And they're doing this to prevent
prevent instantaneous transit of goods using mules at nodes. Mounts now have a dash ability for max speed, which is the first of many mount abilities to come, and I'm kind of surprised that this wasn't in originally because mounts in Alpha 1 did have a sprint function, so it's glad to see this come back in some fashion. Along with that, they also upped the speed of mounts to 35% instead of 30%, so they're a little bit faster, and now the animal husbandry ones are a 40% speed increase instead of the 35% speed increase. Mounts will now share their owner's name on their nameplate. This will make it easier for you to find your mount when lots of mounts are present, which was a little bit annoying at times, but it wasn't impossible to find your mount, but it's a nice quality of life improvement that they've made. They fixed the lighting bug in the Hall of Judication, so you'll now no longer find like an eternal night type area in there and have to kite mobs outside of this area so you can actually see when you fight them. They've improved NPC responsiveness in combat, made changes to prevent NPCs from getting into unresponsive states, fixed a bug that caused people to crash when someone near them switched certain weapons, UI fixes for Spirit of the Undying quest, improved the reliability of Resplendent Beam ability, fixed issues with NPCs that had placeholder status effect icons, skeletons will no longer be able to transcend the limitations of undeath by stacking hundreds of copies of the revive ability, improved skeleton animation reliability, web weavers no longer kite better than your party, they changed the cooldown on their back pedal, the raving rabbits event will now give rewards, they fixed various issues with the map in minimap zoom, improved the visual quality of some landscape assets, improved mount animations, fixed a bug where mount eyes could dislocate from their skulls, improved the mage blink rubber banding issues, and thank god because because that was driving me absolutely insane as a mage. They improved the legibility and flow of Horns of the Betrayal event. Caravan health regen has been reduced so they're easier to take down. They fixed issues with incorrect flying mounts being sold at nodes. Additional server stability and FPS improvements across the board. They fixed the client crash on lower end PCs and made improvements to prevent issues with characters appearing to be stuck on server boundaries. So hopefully you see that wall of characters that I ran into a bit less now than we had in the past. These improvements are massive, all in the span of less than a week's time, leading into the second week of Alpha 2. It really shows that Intrepid is working hard to get this stuff done, to really get players into the game and enjoying it and responding to their feedback and making changes based off their feedback, and I absolutely love to see it. Something to keep in mind though is this isn't even the end of the road, because we have all day Thursday where I would expect additional PTR updates, where I will let you guys know if those happen, other than that, hopefully these servers are in a stable enough place for Friday when those Alpha 2 members jump back on to play in their second weekend of testing. And I really hope that Intrepid has found solutions to the DDoS attack so we don't get played with that again for another weekend. Let me guys know your thoughts on all of these changes in the comments down below. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.